The Lazy Girl. Once upon a time, a father and his two young daughters were living together in a land far, far away. One of the girls was very diligent, and the other was very lazy. You barely help at all, and I'm exhausted. Oh no! You are already doing the cleaning. Why should I get my hands dirty now? Their old father was a hard worker, and he was always tired. The only meal they had was soup and some dry bread in the evenings. One day, the old father made a request of his daughters. My dear daughters, you know I love you both so very much. I've been thinking. You are both adults now, and it is time for you to take more responsibility. I want both of you to find a job and work. You are right, Daddy. I will find myself a job. And what about you, my daughter? My sister should get a job, cause you know that's so her thing. But I think I'd better do the housework, Daddy. The old man was happy to see his daughters so eager. The next day, while the diligent girl left home to find a job, her father came to her. My dear daughter, I have some advice for you. Never refuse someone who asks you for help. Always be diligent. Love your job. Do the job that was given to you to the best of your abilities. Thank you, Daddy. I will never forget your advice. That's my girl. Bye bye. The diligent daughter set off to find her job, while the lazy daughter, who said that she would do the household chores, did nothing. The house was getting more and more messy and getting dirty every day. Hmm. The diligent girl walked for days, but had not found anyone to work for. After a while, the diligent girl saw a tree with dried branches and roots. Hello, young girl. Can you clean my dry branches and give me some water to my roots? The diligent girl then cleaned all the dry branches of the tree until her palms were bruised, and watered the roots with her own drinking water. Ah, thank you, young girl. But now you have no water left. It's okay. You needed help, and I helped you. I can walk a little more and find water for myself. The diligent girl continued on her way. Farther on, she came across a hearth with broken and cracked parts. Hey, young girl, can you repair me and make me look better? The diligent girl took a handful of mud near her and patched all the cracks on the hearth. Thank you, young girl. But you got so dirty because of me. Oh, it's okay. Clothes don't matter. You needed help. And I helped. The diligent girl left the brand new hearth behind and continued on her way. After a while, a lovely lamb appeared, but the lamb was black, like coal, from head to toe. Hello, young girl. I accidentally got into the coals and got dirty. Would you bathe me in that lake over there? The diligent girl washed the lamb by the lake. The lamb was white and soft as before. Thank you, but you're drenched because of me. You needed help, and I helped. I was already very dirty. Now I'm cleaner. The diligent girl continued on her way. When it got dark. She came across a beautiful house. Oh, where seven fairies lived. The diligent girl entered. Hello, I apologize for coming to your home without permission. I am a young girl looking for a job to work. 
You can work here if you want, young girl. There are seven rooms in our house. You will only clean six rooms every day. But you must not go into the seventh room. The diligent girl accepted the job. She cleaned six rooms diligently every day. As Fairy said, for a full year. She never entered the seventh room. And when she had enough money, she asked permission from the fairies to return home. Of course, young girl, you can go home. I'm wondering why you never entered the seventh room. My father used to say to do the job right, no matter what. During my time here, my job was to clean only six rooms. And that's what I did. That's what you told me to do. We would like to reward you for your honesty and diligence. Come on, come with us. The fairies asked the young girl to enter the seventh room. When the girl entered, she saw a lot of silver and gold coins. Now, you roll around in these coins, and any that stick to you will be yours. Diligent girl tumbled left and right in coins. She looked almost like a star with the money sticking on her. Then the diligent girl left the fairies to return home. On the way, she came across the lamb she had washed before. The lamb was covered with pearls. I did not forget your help, young girl. Take and get as many pearls as you want. The diligent girl thanked the lamb and covered her arms and neck with pearls and continued on her way. This time, she came across the hearth she had previously repaired. I did not forget the help you gave me, young girl. Take it, my warm breads. My lovely cakes are yours. The diligent girl ate some of the bread given by the hearth and took some of it to take home and continued on her way. A little further ahead, she saw the tree. Its branches were covered with fruit. Come, young girl. I did not forget the help you gave me. Take it. All my grape juice is yours. The diligent girl thanked the tree and finally returned home. Thank you very much. What a fruitful experience. <laughs> her father and lazy sister greeted her at the door. The girl's bundle was full of gold and pearls. The lazy sister was very jealous when she saw that her sister was so rich. Look at all those coins. I must go find a wealthy family to get a job from. If my sister has pearls, I will get emeralds. The lazy girl told her father that she is leaving home to look for a job. Oh, uh, okay, my daughter. But you couldn't even work at home. How will you find a job out there? Hmm. The lazy girl left before her dad could even finish talking. She walked day and night. A little further down the road, she came across a tree with dry branches. The tree asked the girl for help. Uh, hello, young girl. Would you clean my- uh, I can't deal with you under the sun. My hair will get messy. Bye. Oh. Hmm. The lazy girl moved on. She saw a cracked and broken hearth a little further. Hearth asked her for help. I can't get my thin and delicate hands dirty for you. My nail polish goes bad. Bye. The lazy girl did not help the hearth either. Then she came across a lamb that was dirty, like black coal. And the lamb asked her to give her a bath. Ew! Disgusting! Get out of my way, you dirty thing! The lazy girl ran away. What a lazy little lamb. Can't even wash itself. And came 
upon a huge house. The lazy girl took advantage of this and asked for work from the seven fairies who were the owners of the house. The head fairy asked her to stay for a year and clean only six rooms. Don't forget, young girl, you will never ever be able to enter the seventh room. The lazy girl reluctantly cleaned all six rooms for months. However, one day she gave in to her curiosity and entered the seventh room. Instead of gold and silver coins, there were bees and bats inside. The bees stung the lazy girl in such a way that she was scarred all over. She was very hurt. The girl immediately left there and started running towards the house. As she ran, she saw the lamb, which she turned down her request for help. The lamb was covered with pearls. The girl wanted to catch the lamb to get some pearls, but the lamb ran away from her. <sighs> the girl continued walking and was very tired. At that moment, she came across the hearth that she turned down that requested her help. There were loaves of fresh warm bread on the hearth. When the girl wanted to buy a slice of bread, the hearth got hot and lazy girl's hands got burned. When the lazy girl ran away from there, she came across the tree which she had refused to help. There were bunches of fruit on the branches of the tree. When the lazy girl tried to pick some fruit, the tree leaned to the right. The girl ran to the right, but the tree leaned to the left this time. Tired of running around, the lazy girl finally gave up on getting the fruit. She walked non-stop for two full days and finally got home. Her father and sister saw her returning home in dirty clothes and injured, and they were very surprised. The lazy girl told what happened to her with great regret. Oh, and I can't believe it. I hurt so much. Oh. My dear sister, now you understand how important it is to be hardworking. Remember, girl, when you are honest and hardworking in this life, you will be rewarded for sure. After that day, the lazy girl has not been idle and lazy since. The two sisters both worked hard and were rewarded well. And this small family had happy, productive, and peaceful days throughout their lives. The Goose Girl Once upon a time, a queen and her daughter were living together in the most beautiful castle in the country. The princess had a fairy she loved very much. This fairy always protected her. One day, when the princess reached the age of marriage, she decided to set out to meet the prince of another country. The queen gave her daughter a box of jewels to take with her. If anyone realizes that you are a princess on the way, bad things can happen to you, my dear daughter. So, you will be accompanied by my assistant, rather than a soldier. The good fairy also had gifts for the princess. She gave her a talking horse named Falada. Hey, I'm happy to hit the road, my princess. There is one more thing I want to give you, my princess. The fairy gave the princess a handkerchief. This is a magical handkerchief for my princess. Keep it always with you and use it when you need it. 
the princess said goodbye and got on Falada, and her assistant was on a donkey. Hours later, the princess, walking along the forest road, was very tired and stopped to get some rest. Oh, I'm so thirsty. We have water with us. Could you please give me some? The assistant girl drank from the water. Sorry, princess, but I was so thirsty too, so I drank it all. Find yourself another water. I'm not your servant. The princess was surprised at the servant's lack of respect, but she didn't say anything. They continued on the road. After some time passed, the princess stopped. Royal assistant, could you please get me some water from the fountain, please? Sorry, princess, but I'm not your maid. I told you. You can get off your horse and get your own water. The princess and Falada made eye contact. You know, I'm starting to have second thoughts about this assistant girl. You'd better be careful around her. The princess got off her horse, and she got down and drank some water with her palm. The magic handkerchief in her pocket suddenly started talking. Be careful, my princess. This assistant girl is dangerous. But as the princess bowed down to drink, her magic handkerchief fell into the water. Oh no! Seeing the magic handkerchief flowing in the water, the assistant girl saw her opportunity. <laughs> you have no more power left. From now on, I am giving all the orders. You will do exactly what I say. Now, take off the princess clothes and give them to me. If you tell anyone the truth, I'll get you jailed. The assistant girl did not only wear the princess's clothes, she also got on her horse, Falada, and started to move forward. The real princess, on the other hand, got on the donkey and slowly followed. After a while, they both arrived at the prince's palace. When the prince welcomed them, he thought the assistant girl was a princess and invited her in. But he also noticed the servant girl, who was actually the real princess. Well, my prince, she's just a servant. She doesn't need to come inside the palace with us. It would be best if you gave her a job and remind her of her place as my servant. So the prince did so and introduced her to a boy named Conrad, who was the keeper of the geese. By helping Conrad, you can be a goose shepherd too. My prince, I have one more request from you. Could you tie up this grumpy horse? Better yet, lock him in chains. He almost threw me off on the way here. So, the prince summoned an assistant and ordered him to chain the horse to a barn. The assistant girl was trying to make sure her deception stayed a secret and fooled the prince. The real princess was sad and wept that her horse Falada had been chained up. She immediately went to the barn to see him. Poor Falada was just standing there in chains. Oh, Falada, what have they done to you? If your queen mother had heard what had happened, she would be very upset, my princess. Sadly, the princess left her horse Falada and started herding geese in the meadow with Conrad. After a while, she sat down on a stone to rest and unfastened the gold hair clips that held her beautiful hair. When Conrad saw these shiny hair clips, he immediately approached the princess's hair and wanted to take them. Golden hair clips? I want these golden hair clips. Ah, leave my hair alone. Blow, crazy wind, blow fast and straight. Take Conrad's hat and take it away. At that moment, such a crazy wind blew that Conrad's hat flew off his head. After pursuing the hat flying up the mountains, Conrad finally caught his hat. 
The princess, who had retied her hair, hid her golden hair clips. After herding the geese together until sunset, Conrad and the princess finally returned to the palace. Conrad was immediately before the king. I don't want to work with the stranger you've given me. Why, Conrad? She's crazy. She talks to her horse and is blowing off my hat and making fun of me. She doesn't work at all. After these words, doubts fell into the mind of the king. The next day, the king followed the princess in secret. The princess first went to the barn and talked to her chained horse, Falada, again. Seeing the horse talking, the king could not believe his eyes. He then went to the meadow where Conrad and the princess were herding the geese, and he hid behind the bush. After a while, he noticed the golden hair clips in the princess's hair. Blow, crazy wind, blow right away. Take Conrad's hat and take it away. After these words of the princess, a very crazy wind started to blow, and the hat flew again. Conrad ran after his hat up to the mountains. Meanwhile, the princess hid her golden hair clips again in her hair. Seeing this, the king was very surprised and secretly returned to the palace immediately. In the evening, the king summoned the princess to his presence. He asked her about her talking horse, Falada, golden hair clips, and the wild wind. At that moment, the princess started to cry. <laughs> I cannot tell you, your highness. If I did, I would go to jail. Don't be afraid to tell the truth, young girl. Tell me. The princess told the king everything, one by one, starting from the very beginning. So, you are the real princess. Don't worry. No harm will come to you. Now go and get ready, like a princess. The king immediately summoned his son, the prince, and told him everything. That same evening, without saying anything to the fake princess, the prince arranged a feast at the palace. The real princess was sitting on one side of the prince and the fake one on the other. The beauty of the real princess was dazzling. But the fake princess did not recognize her. Who is this girl? What is she doing at the feast? Where did she find those shiny jewelry? That beautiful dress! Oh, palace nobles, I have a story for you. Listen to me now. The king started telling what happened to the princess, as if it was someone else's story. In the end, he asked everyone how someone who deceives people with lying should be punished the heaviest punishment must be given to that liar, my king. Her feet must be chained, and she must be imprisoned forever. Is that so? But it is you who are the liar in this story. You have given yourself your own punishment. Soldiers, take this liar out of my presence now. The assistant girl thus suffered the punishment for ruining the princess's life by lying. The prince proposed to the real princess that night. Then the princess and the prince went to the barn and rescued the talking horse, Falada. The truth finally came out, my princess. If your queen mother saw this moment, she would cry with happiness. The princess and the prince have started a new life in which they are very happy now. And the princess's good-hearted fairy was always with them, protecting them from all evil forever. <laughs>